Hey everybody, welcome to today's Wednesday's Word. I'm Pastor Keith here at Zion United Methodist Church in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. just want to thank you for watching. And we've been talking about prayer, specifically the Lord's Prayer, and uh, how He has given to us um, a structure, uh, the elements of prayer that we ought to include in our time of prayer. And prayer is just simply a time to commune with God. It's a time to uh, speak to God, listen um, for God's voice, and just experience the awesome presence of God, the loving presence of God. And, and it is through our prayer lives that we are transformed. We experience, um, you know, the, the transformation power of God. And so we've been looking at uh, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. And after Matthew 6, the, the Lord's Prayer there in Matthew 6, he spends a little bit of time talking about forgiveness which we spoke about a couple weeks ago, forgiveness in the sense of um, forgiving others and God will forgive us. And so Matthew kind of focuses on forgiveness after the Lord's Prayer there in Matthew 6. But what I want to do is I want to turn to another place in the Scriptures where we see the Lord's Prayer, and that's in, Ma in uh, Luke chapter 11. Luke 11 gives us the Lord's Prayer, but it looks a little bit different. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to read... Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. And I want to talk about what Jesus says after he teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer. And so we're going to read that here. It says, Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves? For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg... Will give him a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So I want to focus on this story that appears after the Lord's Prayer. Jesus continues to teach by giving a parable, a story. And then kind of give some examples of um, what a good father uh, would do for his children and compares that father to our Heavenly Father. And what he's teaching us, kind of big idea here, is that we ought to, first of all, be persistent in our prayer lives. And he gives this story of a person who has visitors coming from out of town to stay at their home. This man has nothing to give his visitors to eat. And so what he does is he goes to his friend's house. And Jesus says, who among you would not give something uh, to this man so that he has something to offer his visitors? And he tells a story of, of how um, the man knocks on his friend's door. And he's like, come on, it's midnight, I know it's late, but I need help. I need some bread to, to give to my 
visitors. And it says that the man's like, don't bother me. It's late. I've already uh, tucked my kids into bed and the door is shut. It's already locked. And he's basically saying it's too late. You know, if I unlock that door, now they had these big door locks. It would have been a huge latch. And so I can imagine if he unlocks that door, it would probably clang, you know, pretty loud and might wake the kids up and wake the animals up and, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, I don't want to bother them right now. I don't want to wake everybody up. So he's like, go away. And Jesus teaches how persistence really pays off. He says that this man just keeps on knocking and keeps on begging him, please open up, please give me some bread. I need this bread. And what's interesting is that there are a number of occasions in which Jesus compares people to the Father. And usually what he does is he looks at um, a person who is selfish or wicked, and their response um, to somebody complaining or persistence, like like here. And he says, listen, if, if this man um, eventually opens the door and gives the man bread, how much more will our Heavenly Father, who is holy and perfect, do just the same? And so he's using this comparison of, of somebody who's actually quite selfish and, you know, self-centered. I'm not going to help you because it's too late at night. And he says, you know what? This man, after a while, because he doesn't want to be a, a shameful man, he doesn't want to be, a, a, you know, do something that's a shameful behavior, sending his friend away because it's too late at night without giving him bread to eat. It's like, this man will actually open up his door He'll give him the bread. If, if this wicked man will do it, think of what the Heavenly Father, who loves us and wants what's best for us, think of what he'll give to us. And so um, he goes on and he says, I tell you in verse 9, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. This is really important for us to understand that prayer is really intended to be something that we do consistently and persistently and with urgency consistently persistently and with urgency that it's something that we do on a regular basis it's something we do we, we don't just give up after one time of praying that there's something about continually coming back to the Lord over and over and over again when we do that some for some reason um, God opens opens the door for us that he wants to see that we're really serious about what we're praying about. Um, that we pray with a sense of urgency. That we really are in need. And we're crying out to God. And we're begging him, you know, please come to our rescue. And when we do that, it seems like God really honors that attitude, you know, of, of just continuing to pray. When he says, seek, ask, seek, and knock, these are words that mean not just a one-time seeking or asking or knocking. This is like a continual. This is like a, this is supposed to be the habit of a believer that we're like constantly coming to God and asking him. And I believe something happens when we come to God and, and we're focused and we're consistent. We're asking him over and over and over again for something. Um, I believe that God teaches us through those moments. We begin to question, you know, what is it that we're really asking for? Why is it? You know, what are the motivations here? Um, that, you know, why am I asking for what I'm asking? And, and so God teaches us in those moments. Persistence in prayer is not just important for trying to hear an answer from God. It's actually important for us in our own growth. Because it's that time spent in the presence of God, seeking him. Um, that's when we really um, have the door open to us and we, we find out, you know, new things about God. We receive new treasures within that. So then he goes on and talks about a father. You know, we're all, uh, we've all had a father that we've, we've come to our father and we've asked that father for something. Some of us are our parents ourselves and our kids come and they ask for something. When they're hungry and they want something to eat, he says, if, they, if, if your child asks for a fish, 
who instead of a fish would give them a serpent? If they asked for a, an egg and they want breakfast, um, who would give them a scorpion? And if we're, he calls us evil, which fair enough, he says, if you then, <laughs> who are evil, know how to give, give, give good gifts to your children. Um, so, you know, we recognize that we have evil in our hearts. We're selfish. And we know how to give good gifts to our kids, even though we're selfish and self-centered. So if we know what to do, you would definitely think the Father in Heaven would know how to give good gifts. So the final thought I want to leave with you is, is what this gift is. So if you could ask God for any gift in the world, what would it be? And we probably have a lot of different things, a lot of different requests that we want to know, or we'd want to have. And, you know, many of our requests, they can even be good requests. We can bring them to the Lord, and sometimes he'll give us what we ask for, and other times he'll say, no, you're not ready for that, or no, I'm not going to give that to you. But here what we see is, is one time where Jesus says, if you ask for this particular gift, I will give it to you. This is a promise that God gives to us when we seek him with all of our heart, when we continue to knock at the door, that he's faithful to give us this gift. And so what is this gift? Well, he says it in verse 13. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So the answer is the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus has promised to give to us his Holy Spirit. And I'm going to look in the book of John, chapter 14. The night before Jesus dies, he talks to his disciples. John 14, 15, he says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will leave you or it will be in you. So he, he promises here, this is the Holy Spirit. He calls it here the Spirit of Truth, or the Helper. And it's the idea of, actually like a counselor, or um, what they would have is, if, back in those days, if, if a ship was out at sea, a small ship, and it, and it was having a lot of trouble, and it, it couldn't find its way to, to dock, um, they would bring a larger ship out, and that ship would, you know, help guide that smaller ship to the dock to save it. It's like this, this guide that's along the side of the smaller boat. And it's the spirit of truth. It's the comforter. There, the Bible gives us many different titles for the Holy Spirit. The spirit is just God's spirit that, it, that he gives to his believers. When we put our faith in Christ, you know, when we, when we recognize that we cannot earn salvation, we cannot um, be righteous on our own, but we can only find forgiveness of sins and righteousness through the cross of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. We place our faith in Christ, that he died for us, and he suffered for us, and bled, and uh, it is by his sacrifice that we're saved. And when we've trusted in that work that Christ has completed for us, that he actually gives to us a deposit of his Holy Spirit within us. Well, there's something about it that we continue to come back and, and ask him for, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's like a begging, like, Lord, continue to fill me with your Spirit. Continue to bless me with the presence of your Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a wonderful presence. Imagine, or think back in, into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there are many stories of, of people who just flocked to Jesus. They just wanted to be around him because of his teaching and his presence and his healing and his miracles. All The whole package. They just wanted to be around Jesus all the time. Imagine if you were in that, you know, at that time you were around them. And, and you wanted to also 
see Jesus. You would want to be around him all the time. You would follow him. You would, you know, if you knew what treasure you had right in front of you, you'd want to be with him. Well, today we don't have a physical Jesus with us, but what he's done is when he ascended into heaven after his resurrection, he sent his Holy Spirit at Pentecost into the world so that all could could have the presence of Jesus. And so this is like having Jesus, you know, in our very midst. It's like having Jesus right there with us. Only it's not a physical Jesus that we can see. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know the Spirit's presence. You know, you can see this the Spirit working. Just like you can't see wind, but you can see wind, you know, knock a tree over. Or in a tornado can toss a car across a parking lot. You can see the effects of it. You can see the effects of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit fills us. The Spirit empowers us. The Spirit gives us wisdom, the truth. The Spirit makes us come alive. It quickens us and, and brings about holiness within us. Fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, so on, that is produced within us. We're transformed. We're made into Christ-like people. And so we need the Holy Spirit. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do this life without the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit brings unity. It brings peace. The Spirit brings, like I said, holiness within us. And so God wants us to continue to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit, to seek to be filled afresh every day. Yesterday's uh, filling of the Holy Spirit doesn't do us any good today. And so we're called to be filled afresh every day with the Holy Spirit. You know, there is a, a spirit of deception that is out there today that is just destroying people's lives. It is, it is deceptive and it's creating fear and anxiety. Um, it's, it's creating anger and division. It's really destructive. Many have have bought into the lies. I mean, it is uh, it's spiritual warfare going on in our nation right now and across the world right now. And here we have God willing to give to us his Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And so we're called to seek the spirit of truth, to seek to be filled with the spirit of truth to give us wisdom and give us understanding to help us to be able to discern the times and to, to remain strong in our faith. And so I want to encourage you, continue to read this story on your own. Think about what it means. And um, I want you to spend time um, seeking to have the Holy Spirit within you to experience you know, the presence of the Spirit, the fellowship of the Spirit. God has promised that he will give to us the Spirit. But we have to ask, you know, Lord, please fill me afresh. And we have to ask with persistence, with urgency, and consistency in our lives. So I just wanted to leave those thoughts with you today. And uh, as we close, I just want to offer a word of prayer to you. Gracious God, um, we know that we need your Holy Spirit, and we thank you that you give your Spirit without measure. So we come to you now, seeking with all of our hearts, fill us afresh with your Spirit of truth, the Comforter, our Counselor. Lord, fill each one as we uh, pray to you. Help us to continue to pray uh, with persistence in our lives always seeking to, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for watching today. I hope that uh, this has been a blessing to you. Look forward to being able to share you with you again um, with next, day, next Wednesday's Word. And I wish you blessings on the rest of your week. God bless you.